Am I the butthole for not apologizing to a little girl when my dog scared her? I have a little dog who is not a fan of children. He ignores them when they ignore him, but gets very nervous when they yell and run or jump towards him. The other day I was walking him on the sidewalk next to my house, and a lady was sitting outside watching her little daughter, four to five female, play. The daughter saw my dog, who is very cute and fluffy, and started running towards him and screaming excitedly. My dog got scared and started barking. The girl got scared and started crying hysterically. Her mother started yelling at me and demanding I apologize to her daughter because my dog scared her. I said that I have nothing to apologize for, as my dog was properly leashed and far away from the girl at all times, so I did my duty as a dog owner, and she should do her duty as a parent and teach her child not to scream and run towards strangers dogs, as you never know how they would react. She disagreed, and eventually I just walked away. Reddit, am I the butthole? Edit, the incident took place on a public sidewalk next to the entrance of my apartment building. The dog was at least three meters away from the girl at all times, and on a short leash, so there was never any danger that anything would happen to her. Not the butthole, she needs to teach her kid the proper way to approach a dog. No kidding. I've seen kids who've gotten destroyed faces from just that. No one wants to go through the effort of healing a half-torn off face. And seeing five-year-olds with stitched skin like that is always so sad, not the butthole. That happened to me when I was two, I got away with a broken arm and mangled lower half of my face, though in my case it was a shelter dog my parents picked up without checking how it was with kids. Can confirm that dogs can well and truly f up kids and bad interactions often end horribly for all parties involved. Same here. I was five, knew how to properly interact with dogs, and still got bit in the face because my uncle's nasty dog wasn't good with kids. Luckily for me, it was a small dog and my mom got me off the floor almost immediately, so I walked away with minor injuries. I'm so sorry you had an experience like that. Not the butthole. People's need to talk to their kids on how to safely approach dogs. Same with me, I was 13 and knew how to deal with dogs but still got half my face and head bitten up by the stray that my dad brought home. He was very food protective and I didn't know dad had just given him a bone to chew on so when I leaned down to pet him that was it. 56 stitches later they had me put back together and that dog was no more. Almost lost my eye but they were able to save it. It took me years to be able to approach dogs again. Heck. My parents tried to adopt a shelter dog that was supposedly docile and good with other dogs slash kids, according to said shelter, but it turned out that he had issues that made him prone to violence without warning. Not sure if it was neurological or abuse related, but he gave zero indication he was unhappy before lunging and snapping. I was 18, had had large dogs my entire life, and still had to get a few stitches in my lip because he launched himself at me. Took a long time and a lot of exposure to a friend's dog, same breed, very friendly, before I could be around boxers again. As much as I think Adopt Don't Shop is good in its mission, I cannot and will not have a dog in my house that I didn't raise myself or adopt from a reputable training program again. I'm not equipped to handle a lot of the unknown or undisclosed issues that older rescues often come with, including severe aggression. Up, NTA. As a parent, it is her job to teach her kids to be respectful and calm around strange animals, and never approach one without the owner or handler's permission. A four or five year old is old enough to understand that much. You should not have to apologize for your dog having a totally normal reaction to a high stress situation. I got bit in the face by a neighbor's dog about that same age and ended up climbing my mom like I was a monkey to try to get the dog to let go. Turns out that owner had already had one of her other dogs put down because it jumped the back fence and mauled our postman, so I have no idea why she was introducing the other one as friendly to children. R.A. Bro my uncle apparently used to always mess with some street dogs when he was a kid. They remembered him and once on his way to school chased him. They put his face, fearful face. Like 30 or so years later he still has the scar. Dogs can be dangerous, especially to kids because honestly kids can be such buttholes. These parents really need to teach their kids, I am looking at you grandma, smiley face, Edit my uncle was 8 or 9 at the time. It used to be safer and everyone knew everybody. He went to a nearby school and usually went with my dad. He didn't go with my dad that day for whatever reason and got into this incident. 
And it was his fault obviously but he was a kid and kids need to talk well is what I am trying to say guys. That isn't a good example lol. He messed around with dogs, he knew what he was doing. Can confirm that dogs can well and truly f up kids and bad interactions often end horribly for all parties involved. Yeah. It always makes me so sad to hear of dogs that have to be put down after biting or mauling kids. Dogs like little kids. Need the adults around them to set boundaries to keep them safe. My kid knows to not approach a dog unless say it's okay, and I also grab his hand whenever a dog is near in case his impulse control fails him, which isn't his fault. He's three. I had someone tell my kid to learn to ask, but I've seen plenty of dog owners who insist their dogs are fine with kids when they're definitely not. I am working with my kid to learn to read animal body language, too, since I view that as a really valuable skill. It's a really valuable skill. When I was a kid I once asked a guy walking his dog, I don't remember the breed, but it was tiny and fluffy, if I could pet his dog and he said sure. Bent down to pet the thing and it lunged at me, ready to take my face off. After that I worked on learning dog body language, especially when the dog has more fur than body mass, so that wouldn't happen again. It is a hard and fast rule at my house that my kids are never allowed to put their faces anywhere near a dog's face. No matter what. Ever. You never know what dogs have been through, especially shelter dogs and it's irresponsible to think kids can deal with that. Shelter dogs in my city are tested to see how they do with children before adopting out. You think they kind of just sacrifice a test child to find out. Like just put a dog in a yard and let loose a five-year-old, see what happens? No. They bring in kids who know how to act around dogs, and even ones who don't, and they make sure to have a barrier between the two to start. My fosters go one of two ways. 1. Get me out of here, those little things are scary or 2. OMG little people. This is the bestest day ever. Can I please play? I volunteer my neighbor's bratty kid as tribute. You guys must be in my nightmares. A few years back we had a dog we just couldn't get to calm down. We tried everything we could think of for a year, but nothing helped. Luckily he was a poodle with a weak jaw so he never did any damage, but after numerous bites and he started nipping my kid's friends, he had to go. Now we're starting over with a new dog. She has the sweetest personality and is three years old, so past any puppy issues. But she's a beast, a rock-solid bulging muscled unit of an animal. My family doesn't understand my paranoia, but it would only take one bite to do serious damage. I grew up with dogs of all sizes, and love them all, but I can't stop thinking that it only takes one screw up with this one. How can we be perfect? There is a saying about your experience it goes once bitten twice shy. I've been bitten many times, but never seriously. Usually the dogs apologize and promise to be more careful. It can be a blast roughhousing with the right dog, assuming you're both comfortable with each other. The only times I've ever been bitten intentionally were both poodles, luckily. Most of my life I had a thing against poodles when I was little and one came out of nowhere to bite my ankle, it broke the skin and I had to get a tetanus shot. I changed my mind as an adult after meeting some nice poodles and seeing how intelligent they were, but now I'm back to a strict no poodle policy. I can't say I have a way for you to be comfortable. That said there is a test that service dogs often go through. It's important that a dog who works with a blind person or a wheelchair user not take it personally if you hurt their paw by accident. The test is you play with the dog and by accident pinch right between their toes. BTW not with your fingernails. It's very sensitive skin, pinching with your fingertips will hurt without damaging anything. Very important that this test not be contaminated by playing with the dog in a manner where they snap at you. You know your dog better than I do, so do whatever play, petting or cuddles. A dog that is apologetic or confused by the sudden pinch is okay a dog that immediately snaps is questionable. How questionable depends on how close they snap to your skin. Is it an air snap that could be like a human with a stub toe cussing at the furniture? A very bad result is when the dog growls, snarls or otherwise acts aggressive about it. Dogs tend to perceive signaled pain as intentional. If you are playing rough and shove them, they know you shove them on purpose and you meant for them to fall off the furniture. If you aren't threatening them overtly and suddenly cause pain dogs will usually be willing to see it as an accident. Even if you know you did it on purpose for this test this test shows how they react if you accidentally step on their paw. How can we be perfect? 
You can't. That's why you have to remember that they are dogs. They are predators that by and large we have completely bastardized the prey sequence of. In strange and delightful ways depending on the breed. Best you can do is be honest in your evaluation of your dog's temperament and be educated on your dog's breed characteristics, especially how they relate to prey sequence, and manage accordingly. I never got bitten and am still wary around strangers' dogs. I always ask if I can pet and never pet stray slash lose dogs. My boyfriend on the other hand just tries to pet anything, literally any animal that crosses his path. But he could probably also kill them with a single punch, he's a beast of a man with a gentle soul. Then there's me a small nugget, standing way back, just in case. We are a weird combo. This. This one girl was out for a bit when I was in high school because she decided being super close to a dog's face and blowing on it was such a great idea. Edit. Her face is permanently damaged too because of her idiocy, I feel bad for her but everyone should know not the mess with dogs like that. 100% This. I hate that people basically assume that all dogs are like TV dogs, friendly, and run up to them but when the dog reacts, you never know what a dog's triggers is slash r, they blame the dog. How about you teach your kids how to approach dogs i.e. don't and ask from a distance if you can pet them. It's insane that they believe all dogs are nice. There was a girl in my town that snuck into her neighbor's yard to pet the German Shepherd and got attacked. The parents of the girl tried to sue and have the dog euthanized over it. People are so idiotic to think that any animal is nice right off the bat without knowing slash understanding it, and even if the animal is generally friendly, you just never know. All animals deserve respect and space, just like people need respect and space. I truly give those parents the side eye for not teaching their kids better slash educating themselves. We have a rescue and she's the gentlest soul, in this entire year she's been with us, she has zero triggers that we've noticed and has never shown any aggression of any kind but that doesn't mean she won't at any point. We always remind our kids to never sneak up on her, never touch her things if she's chewing or eating something and to basically leave her the alone unless she approaches to play slash be petted. The daughter saw my dog, who is very cute and fluffy and started running towards him and screaming excitedly. Dog was being threatened. Of course he barked. Mom should have kept her properly leashed and far away from the dog at all times. Not the butthole. Yeah exactly. The kid screams at the dog, the dog screams back to tell the girl that there's boundaries she can't overstep. Simple as that. For real, I met my fiancé when his daughter was just barely four. First thing I did was teach her how to approach dogs. All it took was once, now she tells everyone she knows how to properly approach a new dog, 1. Ask permission. 2. Put hand out to let sniff, if the dog reacts positively then you pet. Not to mention, it's a pandemic. It's even more important now to respect that people's boundaries also extend to their pets. While it's good practice to always ask permission every time, now it's vital to teach kids the meaning of the word no by parents saying it before the stranger with the dog even gets approached. Up, you're not the butthole, and I'm sorry that happened to you. My dog loves kids but if I see one run running toward us, I put my hand out and loudly and firmly yell stop. I don't care if the kid starts crying and the parent gets mad, rather your kid cry because I yelled and get knocked down if my dog jumps, which I know she will despite all the time we spend training not to jump. Edit, words were jumbled. Also, not the butthole. I'm a dog walker and I have two Frenchies I walk who love children are completely obsessed with them, but the same as yours where even with all the training I put them through, they still get overexcited and jump. And they look small but are solid little blocks of muscle. Definitely agree. We have two large dogs, one of them who is aggressive towards kids and we're working with a trainer. But the other day on our walk a neighborhood kid started running up to us saying he was going to pet our dog and I had to be that person yelling no, she's not friendly please don't approach her. You're not the butthole op. Children need to be taught early on that not all animals love to be touched or approached and that's okay. Yes, and the first step of that is to stay back and ask the owner if it's okay. I say this as a parent myself. You're right. Sometimes kids do things they shouldn't, but then she should have been talking to her child and correcting them. Not yelling at you? NTA. Not your problem she can't teach her kid not to scream and run towards pets. She's lucky you leashed your dog. 
I've seen kids get bitten or chased after doing what this kid did because the owner wasn't responsible and leashing their pet. Not your problem she can't teach her kid not to scream and run towards pets. There's a pandemic, the kid shouldn't be running toward anybody at all. I mean, it's a kid so we can blame the parent for that one. Absolutely. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.